2013 was a landmark year for the pop genre. Many iconic pop records that continue to influence and shape the genre came out that year. However, one that I think genuinely never gets enough attention is Sky Ferreira's debut record, Nighttime My Time. This indie rock synth pop record was a critical darling and a modest success in its own right, but the journey to this record, which remains Ferreira's only released album thus far, is a reminder of how hard it can be to navigate and please a record label as an artist. You know the drill, we're gonna talk about the lead up to the record, discuss its two singles, and talk about the album and have a brief discussion about why I think it's time that Capitol Records just stops holding Sky hostage, because again, it's been a decade, and we still haven't had a follow up. Sky Ferreira always seemed like she was destined for the spotlight. Growing up, her grandmother had been the legendary Michael Jackson's hairstylist. Much like many of her contemporaries, she put her music up online through MySpace. It was through that platform that she met her producers Bloodshy and Avant, a pretty established duo of producers that had worked on hits like Toxic and Peace of Me with Britney. She was actually signed to Parlophone in 2009 at the age of 17. Sky released songs like 17 and 1. 1 was actually pretty successful, scoring Sky her first ever UK singles charts position at 64. 1 really did play with the sounds of the era, and it did seem to mark her as a unique voice in the field. Sky actually had a pretty wild journey trying to get her first album made. There was one that was initially slated for early 2011 with a lead single, Obsession. This one had been produced by heavyweight producers DJ Frankie and One Republic's Brian Tedder. When that failed, it was scrapped and As If, her first EP dropped. As If was an electro-pop record that felt innovative and self-aware. The lean towards the 80s sound, ironic lyricism, and a borderline proto-hyperpop production yielded some pretty mixed reviews. 99 Tears remains an underrated pop gem classic for me. Another attempt became Ghost, her second EP, which contained Red Lips, a Shirley Manson co written grunge pop rock single that really evoked the yeah yeah yeahs. Ghost was a really strong EP, one of my favorite deep cuts was Lost in My Bedroom, ironically co-written by Dan Nigro, who would go on to become Olivia Rodrigo's go-to producer. Also present was Justin Raisin, who along with Ariel Rexshade had actually worked on Charlie XCX's True Romance, which shares a lot of DNA with this project. But it really was Everything is Embarrassing that proved to be the breakout hit. That song had dropped in the summer of 2012 and was an indie pop sensation. Produced by Rexshade and Dev Hines, this track was hailed as one of the best songs of the 2010s in general. We gotta talk about that 80s sparse production, Ferreira's brutally honest yet effortlessly cool delivery which really made it stand out from the other music of the time. I remember watching the music video which was shot on no budget yet it still fit the song so perfectly. It wasn't until years later down the line that I realized there was no budget because Capitol Records just did not want to spend any cash. The song song definitely could have become a small smash if they had invested in it. It only had one live TV performance which has been scrubbed off the internet, but the song was strong enough to convince Capitol to bite the bullet and let Sky release a record. Nighttime My Time the final stretch to Sky's debut album was pretty chaotic. The album itself was not completed until weeks before its October 29th street date. This was due to many delays and Sky deciding to scrap material that she had done with John Breon in order to create a more cohesive record. Sky called back Rexhide and Raisin in order to craft a killer 12 track project that became Nighttime My Time. It was named after a line in Twin Peaks. Sky actually had to fund the record herself using money that she had earned from her modeling and acting career in order to to pay for equipment and studio time because Capital just gave up, but every penny was worth it. One of the album highlights, You're Not The One, served as the first single. In retrospect, this late 80s inspired anthem about dysfunctional relationships really felt forward for the time. I kept on thinking of her when Paramore had their after laughter era. The album cover itself caused a stir. It was shot by Gaspar Noé, who would go on to direct one of my personal favorite films, Climax. This cover had Sky topless against a green shower. Capital did not want this cover. They felt like it reduced the commercial potential of the record. Sky would comment on the controversy saying that her intentions were to be very true to her work. I think that Capital botched the release of this record, partially because of that cover and their own personal vendettas against Sky, as I recall that it had been a download-only release, with pre-orders for physicals coming in one week later. 
The vinyl industry had not resurged yet in 2013, but Sky did end up having to fund and press the record herself since Capitol did not make their own vinyls until the following year. In spite of no physicals, it still debuted at 45 on the charts due to downloads. Nighttime My Time received positive reviews, many calling it a very engaging, fresh record about Ferreira's personal life and issues. Pitchfork actually called it one of the most cohesive pop rock efforts of that year. It would land placement in many year-end and decade-end lists. A short follow-up EP with B-sides, including Everything is Embarrassing, was dropped later in that year, and to promote the record, Ferreira opened for Miley Cyrus's Bangers tour. In February of 2014, however, Ferreira had actually broken her shin on stage, but still continued her performance. She had been hospitalized and eventually came back to close out her term. We'll discuss the record track by track right after I talk about masochism and where Sky stands right now. Sky wanted to do a second album shortly after. She teased reuniting with her Nighttime My Time collaborators and confirmed the album's title back in 2015. She wouldn't officially release any solo music for four years. In those four years, Sky would actually star in an assortment of projects, even appearing in the Twin Peaks sequel. A full circle moment for her. I recall she even played Baby Driver's mother in the hit heist film. She covered the Commodore's song Easy for the soundtrack. 2019 was a gift to be a Sky Ferreira fan. Her first proper single since 2014, Downhill Lullaby, dropped in March of that year. The track had been a departure from her typical synth-pop sound and veered into a more chamber-pop atmosphere. I remember watching her livestream performance at the Pitchfork Music Festival, where she played a few old tracks and a new song called Descending. She would feature on Charlie XCX's self-titled record on the absolutely underrated song Cross You Out, a track about leaving behind traumatic people from the the past. Sky absolutely killed it on that track. It was cool to see two artists who have been publicly screwed over by their labels come together and do a collab. Unfortunately, the world got shut down in 2020, but Ferreira would assure fans in 2021 that masochism was still coming in 2022. In 2022, she'd go on to release the song Don't Forget in March. Don't Forget was a return to Ferreira's synth rock style and an outright revenge anthem. Unfortunately, since that drop, we have not heard anything from her since other than a few shows. Recently, though, I have seen fans notice that she was removed from Capitol Records' website, implying that she may be released from her contract. If that's the case, I'm glad for her. Revisiting Sky's discography, I think that her sound would honestly really fit the modern popscape and a return would be killer as pop rock resurges. Despite not being a charting force, I do hear echoes of her work and aesthetics in the pop world still. Well, here it is. It is the nighttime my time discussion. Before I sign off, I really wanted to briefly discuss each track off her debut that's now a decade old, but still extremely fresh. Nighttime My Time is a cathartic record that soars on Sky's simple but honest lyricism about failure and heartbreak. I adored the emotionality of her voice, the blend of 80s pop and 90s grunge really gave it a distinct attitude and finish that was not common at the time. It's crazy to imagine that Sky had been 21 at the time, yet it really captured the teenage angst and rage of the early 2010s, and the record was huge for the cool Tumblr girls and gays of the time. Boys is an explosive opener. You really get a sense of Sky's range and scope here. There's a rough around the edge reverb to the track. The guitars kick in and she condemns boys before it takes a twist and a turn and she starts singing about a boy who has changed her mind. There's a cool instrumental kick that reminded me of a certain other guitar riff from another killer debut album opener. Ain't Your Right is a another kinetic track. I love the way that the drums kick in. There's a sharp contrast between Sky's detached soft vocals vocals that really speaks to her sense of irony. The song, much like the album, talks about dissatisfaction in relationships, but she's letting it slide this one time, but it's very clear from the delivery that this is over. 24 Hours has always been a favorite of mine. Like, I'm gonna fangirl over this song. Uh, it's the time's up, pencils down response to the last track. There's something romantic and tragic to this track. There's only 24 hours left in this relationship that's doomed, but she wants to make it work. The song construction is tight. It really evokes 80s Madonna with the twinkling synths. Sky's selling point for me has always been how she really sings with emotion and feelings. You can feel the desperation in the bridge, the sad wistfulness in how she sings the chorus. This is pop perfection. Nobody Asked Me If I Was Okay dips into grunge. I felt like this track had two meanings. On one hand, it's about a detached lover, but it also fits as a tell-all about working with Capitol. 
the verses speak to someone who just isn't there for her. The way that it plays with the melody is really cool. The chorus shouldn't work, but it hits so well, and that refrain where she says no seven times, it's so effective. I Blame Myself was the second single off the record. It's a slick synth pop song about her reputation as a party girl and a problem child. It's a pretty solid track that's self-reflective. The pre-chorus really hooks me in. The chorus is very conversational in a way that you don't get nowadays. Uh, Sky's often criticized for being repetitive in her writing, but I think she does it in a way to hammer in her points and give her space to vocally experiment mid-chorus. Omanko is a more grunge rock sound. It's pretty cohesive. The lyrics are pretty cryptic compared to the straightforward lyricism of the rest of the record. I think it's a pretty atmospheric track. The title is one of the few censored and vulgar Japanese words out there. It's uh, it's in reference to lady parts. The instrumental's pretty killer. It's one of her best instrumentals. I don't have much to say beyond that. Heavy Metal Heart is a departure from the exhaustive heartbreak that Sky sings about. This one's more of her version of a Torch song. It's pretty triumphant, upbeat without irony. Sky's vocals soar when she sings about someone who makes her heavy metal heart beat. Christine's a trippy sounding track that's partly social commentary about young and rich folks that she knew and her generation. There's a cool cheerleadery vibe to it, but as the song continues, it becomes hard to hear what she's saying as she pitch shifts up. I Will's a defiant rock anthem that gets lost in the shuffle of the record. It's still one of the weaker tracks, but it does sound pleasant enough. But Love in Stereo is probably my personal highlight off the record. It is the spiritual successor to Everything is Embarrassing, down to its slight funk sound, and even the themes of the track. The little guitar riff really did remind me of classic Cindy Lauper. No one really gets one-sided heartbreak the way that Sky does. It's really her bread and butter. The dissonance in the chorus really does keep you on your toes. The closing track and title track, Nighttime My Time, is a sharp turn towards Sky's more cinematic sound. It's a direct homage to a conversation held between Laura Palmer and Donna Hayward in Twin Peaks. I can see why Sky chose this excerpt. Palmer was a very tragic foreboding figure doomed by circumstances beyond her control. Ferreira, in a sense, she too had become the girl who disappeared. All in all, Nighttime My Time remains one of the most elegant, enigmatic, and charming debut records of the modern pop age. I am glad to award it a solid 8.9 rating, and I do hope that Sky comes back with a vengeance soon. And that's a wrap on this video. Wow, uh, 10 years of Nighttime My Time. This record has been a cult favorite. It was not my favorite at the time of release, but it had always creeped in the back of my playlist uh, when I was writing screenplays and starting to learn how to do that process. This record actually had been the soundtrack to that. I've covered Charlie's um, issues with Atlantic in the past videos, and I'm glad those have been resolved, but I feel so bad every time I find out that Sky hasn't resolved her issues with Capital. I hope that she does resolve them soon. Anyway, quick shout out to my members. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. A quick shout out to all my subscribers. Thank you for supporting this. There's definitely more content coming out. I have a few surprises for you guys. I'm excited about them. As always, I hope to see you next video.